Hi, Jacob Kalusner here and today's Instant Threat Modeling 5-minute video series on security covers the base threat model for the APIs. If you are familiar with inheritance in software development, security issues can also inherit from a type of an object and the best part is that you can prototype security requirements. To put that abstraction layer on top of your API, we need to select the top issues for the APIs. And in this case, there is a ready document from OASP, API Security Top 10 2019. Let's imagine a typical infrastructure look at an API. There is a user who uses the front-end application, web, mobile or fit client, that consumes the API. And a typical use case is that an anonymous user authenticates to a system and later on they can view and edit data. Sometimes there is a separate API for back office admins or there are administrative methods in the main API. What can go wrong? API issue 1. Broken object level authorization. Think about viewing or editing other users' data such as profiles or invoices. Number 2. Broken user authentication. Weak session identifiers, expired sessions, weak session management and the best part, test accounts left from the development. The next one is excessive data exposure. It is common that the API responds with a full database object with all properties, but displaying only some of them in the user interface. Think of a function that lists all users and displays only their names and surnames on the screen, while the HTTP response contains all user properties, including their passwords. Lack of resources and rate limiting. It can cause performance issues, but also a denial of service. Besides, it allows brute forcing not only credentials but also object identifiers such as invoices. Broken function level authorization. My favorite one. A user that can only view the invoices can edit them. Or a better one. A low privileged user can execute an admin function to add a new user with an administrator role. Mass assignment. The API frameworks and object models created a loophole for attackers. Let's say a low-privileged user can change their profile name by sending a request with a user object and just two parameters, name and surname. Now, the very same user can add a third parameter of name role and set it to admin. Some implementations will then update the role too. Security misconfiguration. Uh, this is a wide group of um, insecure default configuration missing HTTP headers or cookie flags. I particularly aim for discovering API documentation in the exposed WSDL files, JavaScript frontend, admin method names in the public Angular files, uh, and mobile application source code. Number eight, injections. SQL or no SQL, XML injections. I very often find XML injections of external entities, so XXE, which very often leads to local file inclusion. Improper asset management. The API consumed by your front-end may not be the only one. There may be a separate endpoint for administrators, slash admin versus slash user, or a deprecated version of an API. What I used to find is test and staging environments, often managed by a third party, that are easier to compromise because of debug mode turned on. And the last one, insufficient logging and monitoring. This is a generic threat when a vulnerability exists, but it could have been stopped um, with proper monitoring. If a few hundred thousand requests to brute force an OTP code go unnoticed, or there are tens of requests sent within milliseconds to exploit the race condition, who is responsible? Instant mitigations. For data access control issues, centralized authorization mechanism and also OASP access control cheat sheet covers the basics. To avoid broken authentication, we've got OASP authentication cheat sheet and also OASP session management cheat sheet. Verify the API response against the UI design. Don't just serialize the object. Introduce lockout mechanisms and rate limiting. There is also OASP brute force cheat sheet. Function level access control. This is also OWASP Top 10 2013A7 uh, function level access control checks. Uh, but basically make sure that before running each method, the user is allowed to execute it. Verify the server-side backend code against the API design. Don't just deserialize the objects. There is also OWASP mass assignment prevention cheat sheet. 
you need a base thread model for the corresponding components. Web or mobile frontend, SOAP, or web service and frameworks such as .NET that will allow to set the security headers, the cookie flags and the course settings. You also need to take care of obsolete software and up-to-date operating system, change the default configurations with the default passwords and clean up the test accounts left from the development. For injections, there is OWASP Injection Prevention Cheat Sheet or simply validate all input against a specific format. The best is to cast user input to predefined types with prototype validators. Introduce an asset inventory, list of all servers, APIs, their versions, keep a list of URL endpoints to all active APIs. There is OWASP logging cheat sheet and there is also control 9 in the OWASP proactive controls because basically getting hacked is a matter of when, not if. This was instant threat modeling of API based on the OWASP API security top 10 document, which I really recommend you to read. I also recommend you to contact me if you need help with your API. Otherwise, all previous episodes at securing.b/itm. Cheers.